Here we go. This is the quadratic formula. This is the formula for quadratic equations. See how you pull anything over here over to the side and set it equal to zero. This is the formula for a quadratic function. Notice you've got the same A, the same B, the same C. And you have A, B, and C up here. So all you have to do, I mean, is there any way to factor 11 and get a negative one? Add them together, get a negative one? Don't think so. So this leaves us kind of up the creek. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to write down A. A is 1. B is negative 1. And C is 11. Okay. There's a song to help you memorize this, and you do have to memorize it. Here I go, I'm gonna try to sing. Don't start howling. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. See, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yes, yes. If you want to be a teacher, you have to be willing to make a total fool of yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It's, it's just, just to the tune of Pop Goes the, the Weasel, weasel and my yes. brain just went. went. <laughs> I didn't realize my microphone was on either. Sorry. No, that's okay. I I do it to try to lift people's spirits. But um, it's not original. It's not yeah. original. My <laughs> college algebra teacher actually attempted to sing it to our class. Okay. Um, it's, so it's a tradition. So these different formulas up here, can you tell me what they were for again? Yes. I, I missed this, that. This is the quadratic formula. Right there in all of its gorgeous beauty. That's okay. redundancy. This is the formula for um, a quadratic equation. This is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. And this is a quadratic function. Okay. Now, I always write it out first. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over, that is you start at this very first negative sign, all over 2a. So that means that x equals, remember you always put negative numbers in parentheses, so negative b is negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of parentheses negative one squared minus four times a times c all over two times a okay so that negative negative one is positive one plus or minus the square root of. Well, notice that you're gonna have one 
minus 44. 1 minus 44. Not very pretty. All over 2. Well, this is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 43 over 2. Come on down here. It's going to be 1 plus or minus, and I guess I should say x equals, 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 43 is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 43. So that's going to be I times the square root of 43. I'm going to write it that way for now. 1 plus or minus I times the square root of 43 over 2. So that x equals 1 minus the square root of 43i over 2, but I'm not done, and x equals 1 plus the square root of 43i over 2. Now this is not an a plus bi form. Whenever you have an i number, a complex number, we have to write these in a plus bi form. So over here, x is going to equal, watch how I do this, it's not really hard. 1 over 2 minus the square root of 40, uh, 43 over 2i. And x equals 1 over 2 plus the square root of 40 3 over 2 i. Those are your answers and how you would write them in the answer box. These, these incidentally are, let's classify these, complex conjugate solutions. Of. While we're at it. X squared minus X plus 11. And let's write them in the answer box. And the I doesn't go under the square root, right? Never, never, okay. never. Good question. Right, my wiggly, wiggly answer box here. Okay, here we go. One half minus the square root of 43 over 2 i comma 1 half plus the square root of 43 over 2 i.
Let us move on. Notice how dangerous it is when your B is negative. If, you, if you're doing this in your calculator and you don't put parentheses around negative one when you square it, you'll get the answer negative one. So you'd have negative one minus 44, that'd be negative 45. And you would have an elaborate complex conjugate answer that's totally wrong. So you must, must, must put negative numbers in parentheses. Okay, now we've got a quadratic function. Right? There you go. There's the formula for a quadratic function. And we're being asked to find the zeros. Okay, here's how you find the zeros of f of x equals x squared minus 7x plus 3. You're just doing what you do when you find the x-intercepts. You set the function equal to zero and solve for x. So you're going to have zero equals x squared minus 7x plus 3. And you're going to use the quadratic formula to solve it. Okay, so... Well, first I would try to factor it, but I can't come up with any factors of three that will add up to negative seven. So I have to use the quadratic formula. A equals one, B equals negative seven, and C equals three. Okay, so that's what X is going to equal. X is going to equal negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is negative parentheses, negative 7, negative b, plus or minus the square root of negative 7, squared minus four times a times c all over two a. <coughs> That's positive seven plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 12 over 2 times 1. So 49 minus 12 is 37. Okay, so in the answer box, you see how they write it up here. In the answer box, your exact zeros. Type an exact answer. That means make it look like that. Use integers or fractions for any numbers in the expressions. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. Express complex numbers in terms of I and type each solution only once. They're trying to help you as much as possible there. There are no I's in this. These are real numbers. So in the answer box, I 
I'm going to have. Let's see, I'll write it up here. Seven minus the square root of 37 over two comma seven plus the square root of 37 over two. Notice that since these are real numbers, they're in the real number system, I don't have to put them into A plus BI form, which is pretty good. Well, it's pretty good until you realize you're gonna to have to use your calculator to find approximations. First, let's name them. These are zeros we're looking for. These are the zeros of this function right here. And what that means is that if I plug this number in for X, I'll get F of X equals zero. And if I plug this number in for X, I'll get F of X equals zero. That's what a zero is. So you have two zeros here, and here's what they are called. These are real, irrational, zeros. And now we have to be very careful what I'm going to do now. Here's how I put that in my calculator. The tops, the, the numerators, have more than one term. I'm going to have to put parentheses around them. Um, around the numerator. Watch what I do. OK. Left parenthesis, 7 minus the square root of 37. Very important what I do now. Come to the outside of the square root. You do that by hitting the right arrow key. Then you close your parentheses. Then you divide by two. There you go. Enter. Now let's see if that matches their answer. Yes, right there. Whew, thank goodness. OK, so this one. I'm going to put it here. OK, now I come back to my calculator and there is a, a slightly quicker way to do this, but I'm not going to do it that way. Not right now. Instead, I'm going to type this from scratch. Seven plus. Second X squared gives me the square root sign. Thirty seven. Look what happens if I don't come to the outside. What am I going to do with that? See, so that's why. It's happened to all of us, and that's how you learn. All right, I have to delete this. Yeah. And now I hit the right arrow key. You'll now I close my parentheses. And now I divide by two. You can't do it on that one. We eat on that one. Whatever. And there's the other one. Now you're going to have to pay attention to um, 
how how many decimal places the instructions tell you they want to round to. So let's see. Oh, oh, I hate it when that happens. Um, right here. Approximate the solutions to three decimal places. OK. Here's one decimal place, two decimal places, two. That's a two, really. Three decimal places. This six will cause the eight to go up to a nine. So my answer will be 0.459. And over here, here's one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places. And this three will not cause the one to go up to a four. So my answer is going to be 6.5. One. Yep, point four five nine, six point five four one. And it looks like they want a zero here, but I doubt that they would mark it wrong if you didn't have it. OK. Now here's another one. No. I Are guess you saying no to me or your children? You're in a lot of trouble. Oh, oh sorry. I was my bad. I, I, We're having behavioral difficulties this morning. Again, I didn't know my microphone was on. Yeah, they can be pretty sneaky. I'll leave it to you to turn it off. I, I meant the microphones, but kids too. Um, OK, so notice here you've got a negative seven in front. Don't lose your negative seven. Let's move on. Here's another complex conjugate pair right there. Except. This is factorable. No, really? Yeah, three times two is six. No, no, it's not. It's not. That would be negative two times negative three, which would give you negative five. No, OK. All right. A negative two would make it factorable. But this isn't. So again, Actually, I have faith you can do this this time. Actually, I don't. Let's make sure. A equals three, B equals negative one, and C equals two, and X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. See how I ran out? Pull your bar over. That could, that could save you from getting mixed up. 2a, okay. So now let me plug in the numbers and I'll scroll up. Negative, negative one plus or minus the square root of negative one squared minus four times three times two over two times three. Okay, this is not gonna be as hard as I thought it might be. Okay. Now we're going to have positive one plus 
or minus the square root of positive one. Minus 12 times two, which is minus 24. Over six. So this is going to be one plus or minus the square root of negative 23 over six. And that's going to be one plus or minus i times the square root of 23 over six. And so, we are going to have one over six plus or minus the square root of 23 over six times i. And there's a chance, if you can find the plus or minus in the toolbar, that you can uh, go ahead and write your answer like this. But if not, you can write it like that. <laughs> 